You think that you are free, you are free. You think you are liberated, you are liberated. As you think, so you become. But if you think you are bound, you are bound. Thinking, just knowledge, know it, that's all. In a sense, you are never, never bound. You are always free. But you think you are bound, but you call ignorance. The Saiba uh, Siddhanta, Shivagnana Bodham, I think, is to give a sort of analogy. Once upon a time, there lived a nice big female lion, lioness, in a big jungle. After some time living there, she found a friend, a mate, and they lived together and she became pregnant and she was expecting a baby, a lion cub. At that time, some hunters came into the jungle and they were shooting animals and they saw this <coughs> pregnant lion, lioness, and they were chasing. So the lioness jumped for its life and as it was running and jumping, it gave birth to the baby. And she couldn't stay behind to do anything with the baby. She had to save her life. So she ran away. But uh, the hunters didn't see the baby cubby lion. So they saw the lioness ran away and they got disappointed. They went back. The baby lion was lying there crying. At that time, a flock of sheep came. There was a mother sheep. When the mother sheep saw this baby, it went there and started leaking. And then the baby slowly got up and the mother gave some milk also to the cubby lion. And the lion cub started drinking milk from the sheep and then joined the flock. And it was just going like everybody. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> because in the midst of lion, what can you do in my sheep? From the very childhood, she didn't know that it's a lion. It did everything like the sheep. It went on for several years. It grew into a big lion, but still it wasn't the sheep in the flock. One day another big lion came hunting and it saw the whole flock of sheep and it came running to catch. They are all running ahead. As the lion was running behind, all of a sudden she noticed, they noticed, my goodness, what is he doing here? Why is he running? <coughs> he forgot all about catching a sheep. He went there, stopped in front of this, huh? the cubby sheep line. <laughs> <laughs> you fellows stop there. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you ashamed? You are a lion. <laughs> Again. He got really angry, held a man tight, took him to the water source and said, Look there, look who you are. 
First this got frightened. But then the lion insisted, come on, look, look. When they look, <laughs> I look like you. The lion said, yes, you are another lion. Am I? Don't you see? See my face and that's your face? Yeah. Immediately it started roaring like a lion. Will it go back to the sheep? Huh? It just ran away with this big lion. That was the story given the scriptures. You happened to be in the flock. And you are simply bad going around. Eh? <laughs> eh? I am a sinner, I am a mortal being, I am this, I am Michael, I am Jackie, I am Johnny, I am this, I am that. Hmm? Hmm? You are identifying yourself as ordinary, worldly, eh? American, Australian, black, white, big, small, thin, slim. Hmm? until another lion comes and catches you by your <laughs> neck and come on! You are no more that sheep. <laughs> I'm not going to take you to the grazing field. <laughs> you are a lion. Roar like me. But of course when when somebody bites you, catches you like this, you try to get out of it. Ah, don't touch me. <laughs> I want to be a sheep again. I am a sheep. <laughs> you just want to be a cheap sheep. <laughs> Get up and roar that you are a lion, never a sheep. I am that I am. Aham Brahmasmi, Shivoham. Yeah. Exert your true entity. Remember that always. Get resurrected. Then use the body. You can just move around for 40 days if you want. Yeah. So let us really celebrate huh? the great glorious day of Easter. Hmm? by realizing who we are, by resurrecting ourselves. By literally passing over from the ego Egypt. It must have been ego Egypt, they just go <laughs> Egypt it became hmm? to the is real. Hmm? Hmm? It's Jip by ego. Hmm. by ego, yeah. Hmm? Hmm? That's why we are here. All other things are secondary. Just use. That is an advantage. That is the reason why when we come, what is the difference between many people say, what is this? I could have done the same thing. I still remember there was a there is a picture of Chidananda before he became a Chidananda. I think he was a three there. He had a an apron or something. I'm a I'm a BA or something, huh? Huh? 
for, for this I went to college. For what? Working in the kitchen. <laughs> he was putting an apron there. For this I went to college. Yes. These are all you do. If you do it, the same thing you are doing outside also. There is no difference between the outside life and the ashram life. You also have to clean things, cook things, eat things, clean up and dig and all kinds. What is the difference? Are we doing anything different here? Huh? Same stuff, no? You sleep, you get up, maybe uh, you come for the meditation. There also individually people sit and meditate there. They do their asana even better. <laughs> and then 8 o'clock, 8.30, you go back, take your uh, crowbar or uh, hacksaw or chainsaw, cut trees and drive the bulldozer. Do everything. Ask Kumar Zelan. His father came and he was surprised to see him. My son, I thought you are here in Samadhi, sitting and meditating. You hated technology and electronics, but you are in charge of the electronic department. What happened to you? Didn't your father ask you that question? No. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't want to do the same thing there. He hated that. When he came here, he started doing the same thing here. So what I am trying to say is, ashram is in no way different from outside world. You do everything here. In fact, you do even more than what you will be doing outside. So then what is the difference? If you are doing the same thing there and here, what do you expect to happen? So it's not the doing. It's not what you are doing, but it's your attitude. With what attitude you are doing this thing? There you are doing it for your sake. I have to make money, I have to get this, I have to get that. Here, no. We are doing, doing it for a common purpose. Not for you, 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 but for us, for everybody. Even that is a sort of American language. Strictly speaking, the ashram belongs to the head of the ashram. You have placed me as the head. I didn't become the head myself. I just wanted to you to be your heart. But you made me the head. So I'm developing a hard nut. So if I am the head, that's why you even called it Sachidananda Ashram. It's not Devananda Ashram, Swarupananda Ashram. <laughs> no. What does it mean? It's my ashram. And what are you all doing here? You are serving me by serving the ashram. Of course, the ashram in its turn serves everybody. Not only you, even the public at large. But the idea here is, whatever you do, you are not doing for your sake. Either for the sake of the head, the teacher, or for the sake of the community. See how easily the, the tie of you, your, me, mine, is taken out. That's the only advantage of living in an ashram. It simply takes you the, the pinch. Right? The idea that 
me doing for my sake. If you could do the same in your home, but it's God's home. They all belong to God. This is not my husband. I call him my husband, but it's God's child. God gave me a partner. The children, we call them my children. No, it's God's children. Given to me to take care of. I'm only a caretaker. I'm a house sitter. <laughs> then you make the house another ashram. But you come here to learn that and to go back there if you want to. There is, there is a training place where you can forget yourself. Renounce everything that you call yours and then work for others. That way you are doing things in a happy way. Because you become unhappy when you do it for yourself. But when you do it for others, it's a joy. I'm doing it for everybody. You have been freed from that agony of I, me, mine. That's the only difference between living outside individually and living in an ashram. It belongs to God. In a way, this becomes a training center so that one day the whole world is your ashram then. Who is the head of the whole world? The teacher of the teacher. Guru or Guru. Jagat Guru. Brahmanandam. Paramasugatam. So we are all doing for that Guru who owns the whole cosmos. The moment you keep this in your heart and you function with this knowledge, you are past. That is pass over. So may that resurrection pass over, freedom, liberation, moksha, salvation come to you by your proper understanding. Like this auspicious day. Help us all to remember this truth and to live in that truth. Om Shanti.